what you want! Why are you following me? I think you're misguided. Yeah, I know I've been burned before, but... But what? She's a journalist. It's in her nature to cause trouble. If an interview with me does some good, it's worth the risk. Well, I'll remind you of that when your sexual peccadilloes are spread all over the newspapers. I don't have any sexual peccadilloes. And what time are we to expect this paragon of truth and virtue? Lunch. You still up for your therapy later? Absolutely. Dr. Bell, thank you for your completed paperwork. Sorry? Oh, that's right. You forgot. Perhaps that's why this practice is slowly grinding to a halt. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get to it on my lunch hour. Vivian, we're healers of the sick, not bookkeepers. We answer to a higher calling. Oh, I'm glad you take the administration of this practice so lightly. Then you won't mind if I forget to hand in your holiday request form. OK, I'll have a word with Melody. Give her a few tips over mm. there. Artie, listen, I just want to say thanks for our chat on Monday. Good advice. All right, works out. Well, things are looking up. See ya. Shall I do something nice for dinner tonight? What do you fancy? Um, I'm not sure what time I finish. I've got a lot on. I'll call you later, OK? You, aren't you? No. Sorry. Um, it's been a while since I was here. I need to book an appointment. Name? Alistair Sanders. Which doctor do you usually see? Dr. Fenton. He's on holiday at the moment. It'll be a week or so. Uh, no, I have to have something sooner. Please? Jake Wallace? It is you? Leanne Gates? I know, it's been years. Yeah. Leverbridge High, I was in the year below you. Right, how's it going? Yeah, good. You look great. Ooh, that's obviously why you're here. So I'm an accountant now. Not exactly the dream career I'd planned, but you know. What about you? Just got back from abroad. Yeah? Yeah. Where? Top secret, is it? I was in the army. Afghanistan. Yeah? Cool. So you're not anymore? I mean, clearly you are not in Afghanistan anymore. <laughs> but you're not on leave. You're out. I'm just doing a bit of labouring while I sort out my options. Right. At least you're doing something useful with your life. Uh, no. It has to be a male doctor. Dr. Clay has some appointments tomorrow. That's fine. It'll be evening surgery. Um, 5.45? Great. Good morning. Can I help you? I've got to bring it up. We hated each other at school. There's no getting away from it. Different planets, wasn't it? You were one of the brains. I wasn't good for much. Don't be daft. What about the football team? You were the star. All the girls used to come and watch you play. Jake the striker. With the muscles and the cool looks. They all loved you. Of course I didn't. I was only in love with my books. I'm sorry for giving you such a hard time back then. And I said some horrible things. I forgive you. And let's face it, kids are just nasty. 
We're different people now. And just to prove it's forgive and forget, why don't we go for a coffee after this? Yeah, all right. Mr Wallace, you can see the nurse now. Funny how we're expecting a lady. <clears throat> Sorry about that. No problem. I've been stitched up by enough fairy ass blokes before. <laughs> that doesn't look too bad. I'll just clean it up. How'd you do it? Nail. Are you up to date with your tetanus? It's a nice tat, unusual. Picked him up in the army. A few of us had him done when we first got posted to Afghanistan. Oh, that'd be useless in the army, me. All them rules and regulations, no chance. <laughs> Funny, it's exactly what I was looking for. Yeah? Uh, you don't have to make our choices for yourself. Uh, no, that I can understand. I joined the army because I didn't know what to do with my life. Thought it might give me some direction. Mm, did it? For a bit. So why leave? Discharged on medical grounds. Still getting on well with the medication and the counselling? I think it's time to stop. You sure? It's been hard for a long time, but... Yeah. I want to move on. Well, it's been, what, um, a year since your sister died? Committed suicide. Not been easy finding work since I got out. Not much out there. I've had a load of jobs. There's nothing you call fulfilling. What sort of thing are you looking for? That's the trouble with the army. You don't have to think for yourself. By the time you get out, you've forgotten how to do it. Yeah, my sister signed up. Air Force officer training. But she always knew what she wanted. Holiday camp that. <laughs> my other sister it runs a health and beauty cell. Good one. Both of them always knew how to keep her around the main chance, you know what I mean? Me, not so much. I got work in an old folks home as a teenager and just sort of drifted into nursing. But you like it, right? Oh, yeah, I love it. But that's the point. You know, it was just luck, not ambition. And well, it all worked out great. Some of us aren't so lucky. I don't forget I said that. I sound like a loser. Thanks. For what? For talking. I feel like a bit of an outsider, you know? Mm. Where no one's experienced the things I've done. Nobody'd understand. They got. I can't begin to imagine what it's like in Afghanistan, but I know it's always good to get stuff off your chest. I wouldn't put you through it, mate. <laughs> Thanks all the same. For a long time, I couldn't get it out of my head. Finding Carly after she'd taken the overdose. Trying to bring her around. You did all you could. But tell me, how do you live with someone so closely, not notice something so big? So I can't figure out. Must have been on her mind for such a long time. Am I a bad person? Just wrapped up in myself that I was totally blind to all the signs. You're not a bad person, Leanne. You're not. When someone really wants to kill themselves, they often just keep it all locked up inside. It was your sister's choice. You know those flashbacks that kept happening? About finding her on the bathroom floor, staring at me like I'd failed her. I don't have them anymore. Not for a long time. I never thought that would happen. And I don't want to forget her. No, you won't. But I'm starting to feel like me again. Would you leave me alone? Creeping up here to spy on me? It's not true. I said it's not true! Gee. Leave me alone! Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. You idiot! I'm sorry. No! Maybe you should see a doctor. No, just for a chat. No. Jake, listen to me. Sorry, you need help. Jake? 
Hey, good to see you. Come through. Let's go out. Outside? If I was asking you on a date, I'd have brought flowers. It takes more than that. You should be flattered. Normally, I just whistle. People talk more freely in the fresh air. Ah, journalistic ploy. I've got plenty more where that came from. Besides, I want to see how good you are in that chair. I'm pretty good. I bet I can tell how long you've been in it by how well you drive. You're on. Let me get my jacket. Do you remember when they evacuated the whole school? After the food tech room nearly went up in flames. Yeah. Someone let a pan catch fire. That was me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was mortified. I stayed off school for the whole week. You've been in touch with anyone since you've been back? No one? No friends, no girlfriend. I'm the original Billy No Mates. Not even your dad. He's busy doing his own thing. He's happy in his own little world. We've not seen a lot of each other since, uh, since I got back. I lost my sister last year. Carly? Yeah. Suicide. Why did she do it? She split up with her boyfriend. She was having trouble at work. I don't know. I think everything just got a bit too much for her. Oh, that's... It's awful. Oh, Leanne, I'm really sorry. Thanks. I just wish you'd talk to me before. How'd you pick yourself up after something like that? I didn't. Not for a long time. I broke up with my boyfriend after she died, and all my friends got sick of me moping around all the time. See? I'm Julie No Mates. Oh, you shouldn't be on your own thinking about all that. You should go out. I suppose. I could take you for a drink. Uh, to the cinema. If you want. I'd like that. Hi, it's Jimmy. Oh, my favourite doctor. How you doing? Are you okay? Yeah, of course. You sound a bit weird. What's up? N nothing. Just wanted to hear your voice. Did you miss the army? I missed the discipline. Oh, don't miss Afghanistan. You just seems so far away. I never normally think about it unless it crops up on the news. It's not the other side of the world. It's here now. What goes on there affects everybody. It's like grains of sand in the desert. All that sand packed together. One shifts another, and another. It just keeps on going. It's all joined up. Afghanistan, Iraq. Some little kid gets shot out in Iraq, he comes back here eventually. You can't avoid it, no matter where you are. What happened to you out there? Inside, I've just got all this... I don't want to put it on you. Jake! Whatever happened... You can learn to move on. You know, and you can talk to me about it if you want. It's good to get things out in the open. I was on patrol. Helmand Province. Sangin. Right in the middle of nowhere. Dangerous, really bad, you know? A couple of Yank soldiers were killed there the previous week. Okay. Everything was just really tense. We were all nervous, jumpy, sweating. The enemy was swarming all over the place. You had to keep your focus the whole time. Not now.
go to the skateboard park. I'll show you what I can really do. <laughs> no need. I can see you're a real daredevil. Well? 18 months. Very impressive. All right, I get it. You're never gonna go. Yeah, it's illegal, so what? I smuggled it back when I left. It's my old one. I sometimes wonder what would have happened if I hadn't gone on patrol. I was done for when the transport hit the mine. I killed all the others straight off. My mates. I was on my own with a sandstorm blowing in. Only one way to put it behind me. Please, it's an emergency. I'm really scared. Where's Jake now? Um, he could have gone back to his flat. Or he might be at the demolition site where he works. Oh, he's on Warden Road. <sighs> All right, leave it with me. All right, I'll meet you there. The accident left me with a compression injury to my lumbar region. An incomplete spinal injury. And yet, I'm paralysed from the waist down. How are you coping? I'd like to say I'm taking it in my stride. <laughs> uh, hasn't been easy. When the doctors first told me, I, I was in shock. But I've stayed positive, and I, I think that's helped. How about therapy? Usual physio at the hospital. And I'm, I'm trying a, a complimentary therapy at the moment. Hardest thing to deal with? Coming back home. That didn't take much thought. It's true. And all those things you take for granted. You know, like making a cup of coffee, hanging and washing out the dryer. I had to learn a whole new way to live. But I did it. Congratulations. OK, that's all the basic stuff. And I think you'll agree, nothing earth-shattering. Thanks. Let's get to the meat. Archie wants to ask you something. Go on, stand up straight, she won't bite. Oh. I've had some trouble with a patient of mine, an ex-soldier. I don't want to bother you with it, but... You're concerned? OK. Um, was that what all the noise was earlier? Oh, yeah, we were just talking and he just started hallucinating. Absolutely lost it, threw me across the room, and then a second later, he was fine again. Really apologetic. Ex-soldier. We had a doctor here once who served in the Bosnian War, and he suffered with post-traumatic stress from all the things that he'd seen. What are the symptoms? Oh, loads. Uh, flashbacks you can't switch off. Um, sudden intense rage, low self-esteem, uh, survivor guilt. That could be it. Well, if your patient's symptoms are that pronounced, there could be a problem. Why? Well, there's a very real risk of suicide. Or violence against others. Possibly. How has your disability affected your relationship with the other doctors at the surgery? It has. Come on, there must be some change. Do they treat you differently? No, not at all. Do they question your judgement more? Do they treat you as lesser? No, honestly. Same as it ever was. Sex? What, here? How has your disability affected your relationship with women? Or men, sorry. Women. And it hasn't. Are you dating? I don't think this is any of your business. It is my business. You agreed to do an interview about your disability. It doesn't just affect your work, it affects every aspect of who you are. Really? And there's me thinking it just meant I've got the best parking spaces. So once more, sex. Do you think women no longer see you as a sexual person? Do you feel emasculated? Are you afraid to ask an able-bodied woman out? Are you terrified of going to bed with someone for the first time since your accident? Is your libido OK? How are you finding those parking spaces? Well, your questions are pointless. Oh, really? You're the journalist uh, now. My injury isn't permanent. I'm going to be out of this in no time. 
Come on, next question. Stay back a bit, all right? I want to help him. You can come over as soon as we're sure it's safe. I'll give you the nod, all right? Jake. What do you want? Your friend, Leanne. She's worried about you. I lost my temper, that's all. It could be a bit more than that. You might be suffering from post-traumatic stress. So? She should talk to a doctor. What's the point? I need to do something. Got to be some payback. What's in the bag? <laughs> My gun. What sort of payback? Forget it. Ran out of questions? This wasn't a good idea. It's a good idea until you got personal. What? You mean interesting? What, my boy? Yes, you are. The start of the interview was OK. You can use that. If I asked any newly disabled person the same questions anywhere in Britain, I'd have got the same answers. No insights. Boring. I thought the journalist was supposed to be like a Rottweiler. You know, never stop until you sink your teeth in a story. Only if it's good and juicy. There's nothing here that makes my mouth water. Sorry. Look, Leanne's really worried about you, right? She'd be devastated if anybody got hurt here. Why would she be worried about me? I'm not worth it. Oh, maybe she sees something you don't. Nah, a waste of space. What is it? I took my jeep. My mates. I was on my own. Hold up an old wreck of a house so someone could find me. There was a sandstorm blowing. The enemy was outside. It was only a matter of time. They were circling the house. They were using the sandstorm for cover, but they were getting nearer. We'd all heard the stories. The enemy torturing soldiers, butchering them. How'd it go with the journalist? Remember the car crash? It was a bit like that. Sorry. I seem to be on top messing up for him today. Why was it so bad? She asked lots of personal questions and I refused to answer them. Oh. I feel I let her down. Why are you even bothered? Mother and her baby. Looking for shelter. Scared just like me. I killed them both. I've kept the gun with me ever since. What do you want to do that for, mate? Just hand it in. I just don't want to forget. You won't forget. You can't change what's happened, but you can make amends. That's what I'm trying to do! What, by scaring people? Beating yourself up? What good's that going to do? It's just... I've got to do something. It's just... Look to the future. Make something good come of all this. Balance the good with the bad. It's the only way.
Why did you want to do the interview? She asked me. Well, you said yes. Do you want to be some sort of role model? You comfy? Yeah, sorry. Don't think that's why I did it. Why then? Don't know, I just wanted to. Must have been something going through your head. It was good to talk to someone in a chair. Didn't get a crick in my neck. She didn't apologize for who she was. Just get in touch with her again. Just mine. Hello, Dad. Perfect timing, as usual. You're doing the will, right? Yes. Did you leave a letter for me? I know it's something else. I can see. You need to put a blindfold on you. What's going on? Don't come along, you're not going to find out. It's the club's grand opening and there's a surprise for Ronnie in EastEnders tonight at 7.30. Next on BBC One, it's Neighbours.